Tonight I will capture the comet C2023 A3 using the Dorsey Smart Telescope and the Sistar S50. And I'm here at in the rural area, Borta Sky 3. However, we do have the full moon, but the main reason I went here with the car is because it's high altitude and I will be able to see the comet without obstructions, hopefully also with the naked eyes, and to capture it with the Dorsey 3 and the Sistar S50. In 400 meters, you arrive at Monumento Rasquale de la Bobalna. Okay, so we are almost there. Look, dear, where's the fiore? Le ves? Look here at the Bobalna monument. We notice a family of deer. We arrived and we'll do some astrophotography here. They made the road better. It was a rock festival. We'll capture the comet C2023 A3. Maybe I'll go with the telescopes directly there, an image directly from the monument, but I might lose the signal. So look, uh, the sun is setting. We have the full moon behind, and in uh, five minutes, we'll take the equipment out and get ready to capture the comet. And we'll find the comet with both telescopes. It's evening. Some stars are visible, so we'll connect now to the door three first, and with the other phone, we'll connect to the sister S50. Successful connection. Disable host mode, we'll go photo, and we can go get focus on the moon if we want. First, the moon is on the right on the other part. We can go there, get focus. Okay. Gain zero, auto, shutter, one, two, one, two hundred fifty or something like this. One, two hundred. Go manual. Okay. So something like this. I think we're good. Let's go video a little bit. We'll turn. So we'll go white field also. And I think it's filming with the other one, and there is a comet, you see, so low. So we leave it like this on, on the right, and go a little bit lower. And find find them, because we are with the white field lens. And let's see it. We should be able to see it. Uh, settings, shutter, auto. It's getting very low. Okay, let's go wide. I think there it is. Oh, no, it's on the left. Okay. Uh, we'll go Astro mode. We'll go here calibration and confirm. We let it calibrate. And yeah, for the moment, I cannot see it. So it should be somewhere towards west. I think that was Venus. So we'll check also Stellarium in one second. And I'm testing a new beta former. Okay, success. And now we should have updated comets here. We'll go Astro mode and Atlas. A3. And let's go manual. Let's find it. Start go to. And look, we see it. We see it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it centered it. Go gain 40, one fourth of a second. We'll go video mode and film it a little bit with the white field lens. But with the full moon, it's hard to, to see it with the naked eyes. We'll use this one, okay, with one second exposures. Five seconds, gain 40. Up. Okay, let's see how many. Let's stop. Yes, and uh, select how many settings. We we'll go with five darks. Gain 40. Find again the comet. Let's see if it's visible. Uh, find the star. Star go to. We was able to find the comet. What do we need to track on something else because the Feature is not ready. 
because he has better testing. Uh, now is the best period to capture it. It's closer. It's tracking, it says. Let's see here, settings. And let's go white field now. Best white. Go five seconds. Gain 40. And try a live stack. Oh, so nice, right? Oh, and you can see all the tail. <laughs> we have the full moon, so that's why we don't go too much. So we'll go two minutes stack. And go now telephoto. 15 seconds, gain 40. We'll go with also filter to get also better the secondary tail. And let's begin. And we'll try to keep it sharp. We'll go fast with one minute. And then do another longer stack. So nice exposure of 50 seconds. And we can see also the secondary tail. We have gradients from the moon. Fortunately. Yeah, I cannot see it with the naked eyes because of the full moon. I was able to see it a little bit, but now it's very low. And do another one. And it's, let's see if we do it longer. Usually a couple of minutes would be nice. And also start with the Sistar S50. Okay, open arm, stay at last. Okay, Comet, AC. Okay, target position. And select go to. And I will do the same also with the Dodge 3. We're making calibration. Let's say select autofocus, refocus, and move it a little bit closer. Try to move it closer. Lower a little bit. So we get the tail also with the sister. And let's begin. So make first a short stack, so you see, it gets there, so we need a shorter stack with a sister. We'll do one again, but this one, we'll do it with the start, with just two minutes. We stop it at about two minutes, because at more we had trails, and we can see again here the we can see the second uh, tail, the faint one. So we stop it. And now we should be able to see also the tail, the front tail. Yes, and start another plan with the system is 50. We'll go with the white fillers. We go shutter 120. In 140, one, 110, like this. So let me show you where I am. The bubble in the monument, we have slow shutter, so we have some uh, blur here, some motion blur. Here was a rock festival, I believe. And let me go like this. You can see everything from here. Everything, and I'm not lying. The moon, the full moon is up in the sky. So the comet was in this direction, set it here. And here we have the Bopolna monument. It's very noisy, right? I want to take also longer exposure image. Five seconds, gain 40 was okay. Let's take with five seconds. Game 40. No tracking. So it still should be able maybe to stack. Look here what we have. Bobulna Monument. Oh, we have a stack of two. We cannot focus with the white field lens. But look, we can see the big dipper. Can make basically composite. Let's get a big dipper there. It's good that it will stack now also the structures. It seems landscape if you can see the stars in this beta test.
I also did a short life stack of the moon using the Dorsey Smart Telescope. <laughs> After capturing the comet C2023A3 Atlas using the DOS 3 and the Sister S50, I can say that both telescopes performed very good. The image quality was very good on uh, both smart telescopes. Whatever telescope you'll use to capture this comet, the Sistar S50 or the DOS 3, it will uh, give you good results. Now let's talk about ease of use, portability, and also other features. DOS 3, compared with the Sistar S50, is still the most mobile choice because you can just place it in the back end, take it everywhere with you without any effort. However, with the Sistar S50, it took me longer to take it out from the tripod place it in the case, then uh, also when I arrived at the site, it took me longer to set up and uh, mount it on the tripod compared with the Dwarf 3. Regarding GoTo and how easy it was to find the comet, both telescopes performed very good. It was very fast to find the comet also with the Dwarf 3 and the Sistar S50. I can say here the Dwarf 3 has also the advantage having the wide field lens available and it can allow you to find the comet even without place solving, a feature that Sister A50 doesn't have. However, once it gets dark and you can see good the stars, uh, you'll be able to place solve with the Sister S50 and you can find the comet without any problems. How good is the software? At the moment, for comets, I would say Sister S50 has a plus because it's already optimized. However, we couldn't take long life stacks with the Sistar S50 because we noticed elongation on the live stacks. In regards of software, DOS 3 is catching up. They just released this firmware to be able to find the comets and track them. And I did have an error when tracking the comet and wanted also to stack. However, by the time you see this video, they might have already fixed it and you probably will be able to track the comets without any problem using the go-to and also uh, do a live stack. If it's not fixed yet, you can still select a star close to the comet, enable go-to tracking and start the live stacking as normal with the comet just near the center and you'll be able to do live stacking also with the telephoto lens and the wide field lens. And this brings us to uh, more features. With the DOS 3, we can use both lenses to capture the comet, also with live stacking and also with time-lapse video. Having the option to use the wide field lens also to make a time-lapse video, it will uh, give you a very good uh, advantage here because you'll be able to make also time-lapse video with the DOS 3 without needing to have a DSLR camera with you and you'll be able to do both. However, it cannot do both in the same time, at least not at the moment. Who knows, maybe in the future we'll be able to use also the telephoto lens and the wide field lens in the same time because DOR 3 has two imaging sensors, one for the telephoto lens and one for the wide field lens. After imaging the comet with both telescopes, I also tried the equatorial mode with the DOR 3. However, it was too late once I made the polar alignment and found the comet, it was just passing before the trees. So with the DOS 3, we have also the advantage to have uh, two different field of views, one in altazimut mode that I've tested here in this video, and also one in equatorial mode that would have been able to capture even more of the comet's tail. DOS 3 has a larger field of view that allows us to capture more of the comet compared with the Sistar S50. And I think the temperature dropped under zero degrees Celsius. So it was very cold and having to do also photography with uh, two telescopes in the same time and taking also a, a time lapse with my DSLR took a lot of uh, focus time and I spent most of the time outside near the car. So I was lucky that I did bring a uh, winter jacket with me <laughs> and had two extra jackets. I also wear them all. So I had three jackets on me because it was so 
cold. So at, at the end of the test, I also had uh, more uh, fun using the DOS 3 Whitefield lens to image the, the landscape at night and also to do some uh, live staking of the monument with the Big Dipper. Well, this was my adventure imaging the Comet C2023 A3 Atlas with the DOS 3 and the Sistar S50. Hope you enjoyed this video comparison. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button, the share button, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, if you want to support the channel more, joining the membership is very appreciated, and it will allow you also to get access to my astrophotography data, including smart telescope data. By the way, if you're interested in buying any of these two telescopes, affiliate links are available in the description. And before I go, please let me know in the comments what you think about the results and about what telescope would you like to have with you if you go travel and want to capture a comet? This is all for tonight. Stay tuned because more interesting videos will uh, be available soon. And until next time, clear sky.